Elon Musk's moon base alpha plan will end the moon landing debate. Not with another press conference, but with a place that you can watch every day from Earth. A permanent foothold on the moon turns arguments into observations. If a clip can be edited, a base can be watched live. And before we go any further, no, Musk never doubted Apollo. A viral video that tried to make it look that way was edited. The point of moon base alpha is the opposite of doubt. It makes doubt unnecessary. He has joked for years that if the moon landing were fake, America's rivals would have blown the whistle in a heartbeat. So here's the short version of the plan. NASA is sending humans back to the moon under Artemis. They chose Starship, the big SpaceX vehicle, as the lander to put the next crew on the surface. Now that matters because a lander is not just a flag moment. It is the truck that brings people and gear again and again. Musk has shown moon base alpha images for years and he has said it is past time to build a base. He prefers Mars long term, but a working base on the moon is a perfect training ground. Now the world saw live tracking, not just from America, but from radio astronomers and observatories far outside of NASA's control. Recent test flights pushed Starship forward. After early setbacks, the latest flight climbed, flew, and splashed down in a controlled way. It looked almost routine. Now that is boring to watch, but great for building a base. According to engineers, heavy lift cadence is the real unlock. If the company can lift big payloads often, you get power units, habitats, rovers, drills, and comms to the surface. That is how a mission turns into a presence. Now why does a base end the debate? Because it creates continuous repeatable tests that anyone can check. A one-time landing gives you a broadcast. A base gives you a channel. Think about how arguments spread. A meme is fast. A short clip can be twisted. But a live on-site verification loop is faster in the long run. You can fool a clip. You cannot fool months of open signals, multiple antennas, and instruments that never sleep. The physics is boring, which is why it is true. Start with maps that you cannot fake. We already have sharp orbital images of the Apollo sites. A base lets you map those areas again from the ground. High resolution cameras can image the descent stages, the tracks, and the science gear from a respectful distance. LiDAR, laser scanning that measures shapes and distances, can draw clean 3D outlines of known hardware without touching anything. Everyone watching will see the same shapes, angles, and shadows under the same sun. If it's there, it will look the same from Tuesday to Friday. Then use the moon's own mirrors. Apollo crews placed retro reflectors, glass mirrors designed for laser ranging. Even now, scientists bounce lasers off of them and time the lights round trip. From a base, you can point, ping, and show the return live. The timestamps, the delay, and the little wiggles from the moon's motion all add up in public. That is an experiment that speaks in numbers. If someone says fake, you can ask them which number is wrong and why it stays wrong every single night. Now add sound to the picture. Put seismometers in a grid around the historical zones. A seismometer is an instrument that hears tiny ground shakes. When micrometeorites hit nearby, the signal draws a fingerprint. When a starship lands far away outside a heritage buffer, the signal shows a different shape. Over weeks, you get a library of real events. Patterns beat screenshots, and the base does it with the whole world watching. You can trace the rover tracks like gentle pencil lines. Now all of this runs on unedited round-of-the-clock feeds. That's the key. You don't upload a highlight reel at midnight. You stream instrument data, low bitrate video, and radio carriers that ham operators can hear. You publish tool logs, crew timelines, and power graphs with time codes. According to folks who build flight software, redundancy is how you keep truth alive. One camera can glitch. Ten cameras, two radios, and a laser clock do not all glitch the same way at the same time. The key is this. New eyes, new tools, same story. Respect matters too. The Apollo sites are historic areas. You don't trample them for a show. You mark off a buffer. You image from outside the line. You use long lenses, LIDAR, and laser ranging, which are non-invasive. You protect the past while proving it, and you invite classrooms, hobbyists, and rival agencies to follow along. That is how you end the moon landing debate without turning heritage into a prop. A base is only as good as the hardware chain behind it. 
Transport is the first link. Starship moves bulk cargo and propellant. The crewed lander configuration ferries astronauts down to the surface and back to lunar orbit. That split makes sense. One vehicle hauls heavy stuff, the other is tuned for people and precision. As heavy lift becomes repeatable, you stop waiting for one perfect window, you build in layers. Power first, then habitats, then labs. Power is next. Big solar fields, batteries, and smart inverters keep the lights on during the long lunar day. During the two-week night, you bridge with stored energy and careful loads. Life support loops will recycle water and air. Loop just means a system that cleans and reuses what you already have. Over time, teams can test using polar ice, water locked in shadowed craters to extend supplies. That's called ISRU, or using local resources. You start small, melt a little ice, test filters, log the results. The plan is to bring home fresh rocks and fresh video. Mobility and comms close the loop. Pressurized rovers move crews far from base with shirt sleeve comfort. Unpressurized rovers handle bulky tasks. Communications will lean on direct links to Earth and relay satellites. Think of it as a lunar version of high bandwidth internet. You want multiple paths so a single dish failure doesn't go dark. The goal is boring uptime. Boring is beautiful when you need reliable public data. Now here's the part that many people miss. Rivals make this stronger, not weaker. China is pushing for its own lunar presence. Russian officials have mocked US plans in the past and talked about teaming up with China. That is exactly why an open moon base alpha is so powerful. If something looks off, rivals will shout it out on day one. If it looks real, they have to live with it, because their own scientists can't argue with physics on the air. Multipolar scrutiny is not a bug, it is a feature. Now we saw this play out before. During the Cold War, the other side tracked deep space signals. They listened because they had to know. If there had been a fake, newspapers would have loved it. Today's world is broader. Many nations have big radio dishes and deep space networks. Universities do too. If the base runs open carriers, anyone with the right gear can lock on and compare. If the crew says we're activating the laser, the world can set their clocks and watch the numbers jump. Now some worry that competition makes truth harder. In practice, it makes truth louder. When your rival wants to beat you, they also want to catch you. That means they watch closely, so you design for that. You publish precise schedules, you publish raw data with check sums, little math stamps that show the file is unchanged. You make it easy for others to prove you right or prove you wrong. Either way, the debate ends, because the evidence lives outside your press room. Instead, every stage added another layer of confirmation from people who didn't owe Apollo anything. Now the meme machine. Social media is fast and edits are cheap. A short clip can twist a sentence and make it look wild. We saw that with a video that tried to make Musk look like he doubted Apollo. It was an edit. This is why the base must run on redundancy and time. Redundancy means many streams, time means context. A clip starts and ends where someone wants. A live feed does not. When thousands of people can grab the same carrier and replay the same event, the edit loses oxygen. Think of the base as a giant, honest clock. Cameras show the sun's angle changing a little each hour. Shadows move the way they should on a world with no air. Dust arcs in ballistic paths when a rover spins its wheels. The delay from moon to earth stays the same during a pass. These little physics details pile up. They are boring to argue with and easy to test. Kids can model them in class. That is how you choke the hoax. You make the truth simple to repeat.